Hi, my name is Bobby Wilding and I'm Deputy Director of Clean and Healthy New York. I'm joined today by Frances Beinecke. She was the President of Natural Resources Defense Council from 2006 to 2015, having had a four decade career at that organization. Her work focused on oceans and climate change among a host of other issues. She was appointed to President Obama's Deepwater Horizon Commission and this year's Earth Day, ironically, marks the 10th anniversary of that disaster. So Francis, it's great to have you here. Thanks for joining us. It's been 50 years since the first Earth Day when people across the US came together to fight for a healthier world. Now more than ever, people are relying on that natural world as a source of both calm and health. Can you share what Earth Day means for you? Um, well, I was in college on the first Earth Day, so what it really means for me was uh, an uprising, a turnout. 10% of the American population came out and said they wanted and demanded a clean environment for their own health, for the health of nature. And I think now here we are in 2020, that that amount of energy and determination is coming back, that that demand, the recognition of the connection is so vivid to all of us that we want a, uh, a clean environment for our families, for our children, for our grandchildren. And people are coming out on the streets again, demanding it as we must, all of us. Thanks. You've been an environmental leader. What accomplishment are you most proud of? Well, I've worked on a host of issues over you know now almost 50 years. And I, what really gives me um, kind of strength is the fact that the movement is so powerful now, that it's grown, that it's so much more diverse, both uh, ethnically, economically, uh, age-wise. You know, we were all young 50 years ago. I'm not young. You are. And so many younger people now are coming to the forefront. And to me, that is what's going to mean success for all of us, for our future, is a real engagement across all parts of society, all sectors, and a recognition that we have to come together on this um, joint purpose, that we have a clean environment for all of our well-being here in the United States, but globally, it's so essential. And so, you know, what I'm most proud of is really the expansion of the movement, the recognition that this is not a segment, that this is all of us. Great. Thanks so much. And what do you think is coming next? What are, are you working on anything new that you want to share with us? Well, to me, the most important issue that we all have to work on is uh, how we face a future with a dr dramatically changed climate, um, how we minimize those impacts, how we create resilience. And that requires activity across all kind of range of government, society. So this is something I've worked on pretty much constantly over the last 25 years. You know, I'm hopeful because we know what the solutions are. It's not that we don't know what we have to do. And I'm hopeful because there is so much more energy, but the, uh, the road is very steep. Uh, certainly um, the COVID-19 crisis has shown us how a crisis can transform society overnight. I think climate change unfortunately has that ability as well. And if we don't move quickly, we are not going to make the changes that are essential for our own well-being. So I'm motivated on the climate crisis every day. I'm encouraged by the fact that we do have solutions and the demands, but we need to do so much more and we don't have very much time. So, you know, it's a very motivating issue uh, for all of us and will be well into the future. We're not going to solve this quickly. It's going to be with us probably forever. Right. Yeah, it's a, it's a big, we've got big issues to tackle. Well, thank you so much for joining us and uh, we really appreciate your time and thanks everyone for joining us to watch this interview. My pleasure, thank you.